Howdy folks, welcome back to Black Sheep Meadow. I'm Brent and Amber's behind the camera today. We are gonna do an irrigation video on how I set up our drip tape. Uh, I've done an irrigation video before, but maybe not as in detail as I'm gonna try and get it done today. So um, we have, uh, if y'all are just tuning into our channel, for the year 2023, me and Amber are attempting to grow 80% of all of our own food here on the homestead. So that leaves us with a lot of irrigation that we have to disperse and get water to. Some of the problems that I run across on a drip tape irrigation on our homestead is we primarily drip uh, uh, irrigate off of a water well. So that gives us a limitation as to how much water we can use at a time, at any given time. So our particular water well is approximately the pumps designed to safely do seven gallons per minute. So if I can keep my total water usage around five or six, I feel a lot more comfortable with that. I don't want to overstress the well. That being said, in the middle of summer, like last year, we went through over a hundred days with no substantial rainfall. So our water table below ground, I'm sure, fell to very dangerous levels. So uh, getting water where it needs to be without you know overdoing it or wasting water is our, our key here on the homestead. Uh, some of the rice farmers that I deal with on a regular basis, they tell me that in their rice fields that on a hot uh, spring day with heavy wind, that they will lose three quarters of an inch of water every single day off their rice paddies. So that's pretty substantial. We tried uh, some broadcast irrigation in the past and that was pretty much a total failure every single year. We lost pollination and et cetera and so on. So if y'all wanna follow along today, we're gonna set our uh, drip tape irrigation back up. I'm gonna go over all the details uh, on how I make it work for our homestead. All right, so here's a few tips and pointers for our main irrigation hub. This is a orbit system. This is actually two three-valve orbit systems that I've put together. We've got a one-inch uh, line coming in from our water well. If Amber would look down here. A uh, little tidbit is to get a valve, you know, we not only do we have a water shutoff on this pipe coming into our garden at the well house, we also have one out here. This makes it a lot easier. So if I do have an issue with any of the valves or got any leaks anywhere, I can shut it off out here as well as at the garden shed or at the well house. So on this, uh, I've got it set up at six. We have approximately 65 PSI of water coming in from our water well which is fine for the valve. The valve itself is designed to work at that pressure. That being said, off the valve, where we neck it down off of one inch and we go into a, I believe this is a three quarter, we have a pressure regulator that takes our 60 to 70 PSI water pressure down to 15. After 15, we go through a main trunk line, which later on we'll get to a drip tape. I'll show that later. Coming in for our electronic control, we have a seven wire irrigation uh, this is just a loom of, of wires for actually it's purposely for irrigation. Off these seven wires, we can control, there goes some of that central Texas wind. Off these seven wires, we can control six valves. We use a common ground, and then because once again, our water, we can only put out so much at one time, we're only gonna have one valve open at a time. So we'll share a common ground, and then each additional wire will be for the control, the on off for the electronic solenoid on the valve. So I'm gonna put y'all on a slow-mo because this is gonna take me a minute to get all this wired up. One other detail on these wires is we run them and we put them in a grease capsule. That grease capsule keeps all the moisture away from the electrical connection. So throughout this season, I won't have any issues with the wires corroding, losing contact, and not irrigating when it's supposed to. So uh, I'm going to set y'all on a time lapse and uh, I'm going to get all this wired up and then we'll go further on on the irrigation. All right, guys, so I want to get y'all in here on this last one on this grease capsule. We have the trigger wire from our controller, and then we have the wire going to the solenoid of our control valve here at the irrigation station. I'm going to take these two and I'm going to twist them together. I'm going to bend it in half like so. I'm going to take a wire nut. I'm going to twist the two together again. And then when it comes time for the grease capsule, we're gonna open the lid on it. You can see this little vial of grease. I wanna make sure this wire nut gets all the way to the bottom. Just like so. All 
All right, now we can move on to the plumbing. Okay, so now we have all of our plumbing, our main plumbing and our wiring done at our main distribution hub where the valves and solenoids are. We need to get water from those solenoids and the pressure, or the, actually the pressure regulators to the direction where we need to get water for irrigation. Uh, at this point, it, you cannot just take the drip tape and move it any direction you want. It doesn't do very well with kinking. So it has to be run through hard plastic pipe. I choose to run a half inch pipe with uh, the proper elbows, which we're gonna show that here in just a second. If you look at this year for our garden trail, and our raised bed through the center of the garden trellis, we have a little bit of an issue with the irrigation on either side of the trellis has to be, or it's actually a low level, where the container in the middle is actually elevated. So I've got a fix for that. We're gonna run all three of these lanes, either side of the trellis and the center uh, container garden. We're gonna run all those off one solenoid this year. So follow us get into that. Once again, down here, we have a pressure regulator with a swivel connection on the side. I've already installed a 90 degree elbow off of this. Once again, this hard plastic pipe is just pushed to connect. Each one of these plastic pieces is going to push in approximately a half inch, half to three quarters of an inch. And you can see this is our low level section here. I'm going to get a stake right quick. Okay, so now that we have our plastic conduit, or the half inch plastic conduit pipe, anytime these valves turn the water on and off, there's a very heavy surge of water pressure. We're gonna go back over a hydraulic hammer or arrestor uh, here in a minute. But uh, any anytime any of these pipes have a 90 or anywhere that they change direction, it's very important to put a stake to keep them from jumping around. All right. And you can see here, now that we're at our higher level of irrigation, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run a T with the pipe directly up. Once this pipe is directly up, we're gonna zip tie it to this stake and I'll be able to tap in my drip line where it doesn't have any kinks. It'll actually irrigate this entire raised bed directly. And then we're gonna put a cap on the end of this pipe. Once again, all these fittings, and before I push that on there, I'm gonna show y'all. All of these fittings are just pushed to connect. A zip tie up here. I'm actually going to move it somewhere right in there. And once again, we're going to put a stake down there too. And we might not have to. All right. So this far. Everything that I've showed you, as far as this irrigation setup, can be purchased at Home Depot. Let's get into the drip tape. All right, so now that we're at our drip tape, this is a half inch drip tape. At this point forward, everything was purchased from Drip Depot. I don't believe, I haven't seen any of this in a normal box store like a Home Depot or a Lowe's or TSC. Uh, you may be able to go to a, like a, a specific uh, plant place or nursery, something like that and find it. That being said, I found mine online because I was looking for different varieties. This drip tape comes in several different varieties from half inch, five eighths, three quarters, seven eighths. Uh, this particular drip tape's a five eighths and the little emitters on it, on this particular strand, I've got a couple different varieties of these. These little emitters, and I don't know if you can see, there's actually a little slit in the tape right here on my fingers out there. And these, these emitters are every six inches down this tape. Every emitter 
will release, let me think about this, it's 0.3 gallons per hour. So every six inches on this tape, we're gonna run this tape approximately 150 foot long. This tape does not do very well with kinking. So in other words, it has to be laid pretty much in a straight line. If, if it gets kink like this, it will restrict. The emitters are gonna drain more water than what can flow through this kink. So it needs to be laid very flat and very straight. So we're gonna get that set up for you now. Each one of these fittings here, one of these is a plug. We're gonna tap into our main trunk line that we ran first. The other one is a uh, plug that's gonna cap off the other end to stop water flow. And this so, might be a good time to mention that all of this is reusable. Yes, every bit of this is reusable as well. Amber's reminded me here. So uh, this year I'm running new drip tape because I'm probably on my third year with the drip tape that I had. That being said, my main trunk line is probably on its fourth or fifth year. So uh, we're gonna get this set up and then we're gonna show you all the rest of it. Okay, so these fittings just slide inside the drip tape. You wanna get the drip tape as far over the fitting as you possibly can. And then it's a twist lock. This little green collar is now locked over the barb fitting and the tape. This barb fitting here is actually gonna go into our hard plastic line. And we're gonna do that with one of these punches. It kinda of looks like a leather punch. That's probably and the only specialty tool you need. Probably the only specialty tool you need is correct. You just want to make sure your hole that you're puncturing in your main trunk line is in the direction direction of the of the drip tape, the direction that it's supposed to be headed. And if we want to look here, you can see how we have a hole in our main trunk. And we're gonna take the drip tape and just it pops right in. Now we're going to finish running this tape. All right, so now that we're at the end of our drip tape line, it's as simple as cutting the drip tape. I got some big fancy scissors. Just cutting the drip tape. And then we're going to do the same thing. This is another one of these collars. You can see as I twist the collar, how it encroaches on the, the barb fitting. And we're gonna take the barb fitting right inside the tape and lock it down. On this end, I'm gonna try to use just one of the metal stakes. I'm probably gonna have to come back in here with a, I am, I'm gonna have to come back in with a, with a wooden stake later on. That's fine, that gets our drip tape done for now. So from here on out, everything's pretty much gonna be repetitive. So we're gonna put y'all on a time lapse. Y'all can see we do the entire garden. Alrighty folks, so we got all of our drip tape line put out. Uh, there's a couple little tidbits I wanna go over with you before I say we're done with irrigation installation for today. Uh, this vertical pipe that you see right here behind me is a, a hydraulic hammer arrester. And essentially what it's here for is every time one of these valves from our main uh, hub goes on or off, the weight of all the water from the well house out here to the garden, which is about, I'm gonna say 250 feet, the weight of all that water has to come to a complete stop. 
Well, inside this pipe is a, basically just a large air pocket. So that water, as it's the valve shuts off, the water has like a spring or a pocket of air to push up against where the water doesn't hammer and break all the pipes. So this is very important on a large irrigation system. I made this one myself. You can find them online or in Home Depot or, or several other places. I just, they're not quite large enough for this type or this size of irrigation system. But this is very easy to make at home. It's just a simple 90 with the vertical pipe and just make sure you get an air pocket in it. So we're gonna touch base on a couple other things on the tape. All right, so as you can see here behind us, we have all of our drip tape put out. On any of this tape, before you call it a day, go ahead and turn on every single valve and get every tape or every line full of water. As it does that, the, the tape's gonna wanna jump and move around. So that gives you time to make sure before you just turn the irrigation on and walk away, make sure you're actually irrigating the plant that you were intending to in the first place. So what else we got after this? It's not my favorite job in the world. No, as well, you can see, I don't know if y'all can watch by the daylight in the video, this took most of the afternoon and it's it's very uh, messy and it's not the funnest thing to walk up and down the rows mm -hmm. a, a thousand times. But that, and our, we already have. I don't know if y'all can see it in the video or not, but a lot of our corn in these rows is already coming up. Most of it's like four inches tall already, so we were yeah. having to be very delicate around the plants. Yeah, so. but I wanted to show y'all. Uh, I this is just a little piece of the trash, the dip tape, drip tape. tape. Um, so how she was showing you the little. I'm gonna get it in here. See the little, perforation. the little perforation right there? It's in between the blue lines. But I thought it was neat to see the inside of it. It's almost got like a filter that runs the length of it to keep dirt from coming back in the little perforation. Perfect. It also regulates the water flow. Helps the regulation of the water flow. Yep. So I thought that was neat. I just saved one of these for you guys. Uh, you might not know what this looks like before you buy it. Mm -hmm. Now you do. So what well, you're gonna get started on dinner? Yes. What First, are we having for dinner? Some sort of beef product, sweet potatoes, and probably green beans. Awesome. Or broccoli, I don't know. Folks, in the meantime, like our videos, share us, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below if y'all have any questions. We've done really good about going through all the comments and answering any questions anybody has. Do all the things, we'll and we you. will see you next, next time. Week.